What are monoclonal antibodies? So monoclonal antibodies are proteins that are artificially produced. They look almost the same like the antibodies you produce when you have a response to bacteria or to viruses. But the monoclonal antibodies have a special target. They only target the myeloma cell. So the question is, how do those monoclonal antibodies recognize the myeloma cells? Well, they really have a little receptor and they bind only to cells that express a certain protein. For instance, it can be CD38, such as daratumumab or isatuximab. Or we know that myeloma cells also express SLAMF7. Elotuzumab is binding to SLAMF7. It has a special receptor to bind only to this protein. BCMA is another protein that's expressed by myeloma cells. And we have certain antibodies, for instance, Blenrep, which is a drug conjugated antibody that binds to BCMA. So the principle of a monoclonal antibody is it has a receptor and it recognizes its target. And we know that the multiple myeloma cell expresses certain proteins on the surface, which are the target. And the target can be CD38, it can be BCMA, or it can be SLAMF7. And our monoclonal antibody kind of finds the targets with a receptor and after binding to the target destroys the multiple myeloma cell. The naked antibodies such as daratumumab, isatuximab or ilotuzumab that binds to the target destroys directly the multiple myeloma cells. We know by binding to the myeloma cell, the myeloma cells undergoes apoptosis, which means cell death. But we also know that those cells in this process attract other cells of the immune system. So we know, for instance, there's NK cells, we call those cells natural killer cells, are attracted. And when daratumumab binds to the multiple myeloma cells, those natural killer cells, for instance, are attracted and help to kill the multiple myeloma cell. So it's a combination of a direct killing of the tumor cell or the myeloma cells by the monoclonal antibody and also the attraction of other cells from the immune system and helping to achieve the killing. What are the main side effects associated with monoclonal antibodies? So monoclonal antibodies are usually very well tolerated. Um, and we, in the beginning, when we started to give daratumumab, which was the first CD38 monoclonal antibody, we were very concerned about, we call that the infusion-related reactions. And we gave the daratumumab over seven hours, a very long infusion. We have learned a lot. We know that many, many patients, half of the patients have so-called infusion-related reaction. That occurs mainly with the first infusion, sometimes with the second, with the third. But we know that in all patients with a fourth infusion, we don't see those infusion-related reactions. What happens is that the daratumumab, for instance, or, or isatuximab, binds to all the cells that express CD38. Those are the myeloma cells, but also cells of your respiratory tract. So that's why you have the feeling when you get the daratumumab for the first time that your nose is runny or that you have a little bit shortness of breath, that you feel some coughing. And what we do in order to manage that side effects, we slow down the infusion. Sometimes we stop the infusion. And all of the patients tolerate that drug very, very well with a third infusion. So there's not a single patient that had to stop treatment or couldn't receive treatment because of those infusion-related reactions. What we also learned is when we give those medications like daratumumab subcutaneously, there's a very slow resorption of the monoclonal antibody into the bloodstream. And usually we have less of the infusion-related reactions. So what we do is we give a subcutaneous injection of the daratumumab and we watch the patients for four hours to make sure that there is no, I would say, major infusion-related reaction uh, requiring oxygen or anything like this. But we know that this medication with a slow increase of the concentration is very well tolerated. Are naked antibodies the same thing as monoclonal antibodies? With the recent improvement of monoclonal or the use of monoclonal antibodies, we used the term or started to use the term naked monoclonal antibodies. That means it's just the monoclonal antibody. And in contrast to a drug conjugated antibody, for instance, Blenrep, which has attached a tubulin inhibitor that kills directly multiple myeloma cells. So that's why there is a drug conjugated antibody and a naked antibody. We 
don't know exactly which antibody is more potent because we use those antibodies in a different setting. The naked antibodies such as daratumumab and isatuximab are very often used in combination and upfront when patients are diagnosed, whereas Blenrap, which is a drug conjugated antibody, is used alone without com combination so far and it's approved without combination and it's used in later, I would say, relapses. So it might be interesting to really combine or compare those uh, naked antibodies alone with Blenrap alone and to see which one is more efficient. And another antibody which is not approved for newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patients is elotuzumab. It doesn't target CD38, it targets SLEMF7. So SLEMF7 is again in a target and elotuzumab has a receptor for SLEMF7. We also call it a naked antibody. It's approved in combination with IMIDS for relapse multiple myeloma. But again, we have several naked antibodies, only one drug conjugated antibody, the Blenrap right now. Monoclonal antibodies have really been transformational in myeloma. Um, and have improved uh, the lives of our patients to a, a really huge uh, degree. Um, I'll start by talking about daratumumab, which is an antibody that targets the protein CD38. CD38 is very highly expressed on plasma cells, uh, myeloma cells. It's also uh, pretty highly expressed on natural killer cells, other immune cells. The antibody itself, when it binds CD38, does several things. The, the, that target itself has some functions that affect the metabolic state of the cell. Blocking the target alters cell metabolism in some way that is detrimental to myeloma cells. The um, antibody, when it binds cells, essentially coats myeloma cells, also brings in other immune effector cells, cells like macrophages, for example, which are sort of the garbage man that sort of engulfs other cells. And the daratumumab, when it binds, provides an eat me signal that macrophages listen to and can take up uh, myeloma cells. The other way by which daratumumab may potentially work is that it alters the immune microenvironment. It also uh, depletes or eliminates through other immune cells that may negatively impact the microenvironment or the soil within which myeloma lives, uh, meaning uh, specifically the daratumumab can deplete these cell populations called regulatory T cells and regulatory B cells and regulatory myeloid cells. And these are all populations of immune cells within the myeloma microenvironment that, that promote myeloma growth. So eliminating these cells can further kill off myeloma cells. And it allows for an expansion of beneficial immune cells that may help control myeloma as well. Elotuzumab works in similar ways. It actually binds this target called SLAMF7. SLAMF7 is a protein expressed on myeloma cells. It's also expressed on other immune cells, such as natural killer cells. So elotuzumab can activate natural killer cells, and those cells are felt to be important in myeloma control. Uh, by itself, elotuzumab is not, um, uh, doesn't have clinical efficacy. But when combined with other immune modulating drugs like lenalidomide and also with pomalidomide, that being Revlimid and Pomalist, then it, elotuzumab adds a significant degree of uh, benefit to a combination of elotuzumab, Revlimid and dexamethasone, or elotuzumab and pomalidomide and dexamethasone, potentially through a natural killer cell mediated mechanism. These combinations of antibody with immune modulatory drug are now uh, approved for both elotuzumab with Revlimid or Pomalist, as well as daratumumab with Revlimid and Pomalist. Since the filming of this segment, ezatuximab, or sarcleza, is another monoclonal antibody that has been approved in myeloma. Monoclonal antibodies are engineered antibodies uh, that are designed to attack something specific on cancer. So our body makes antibodies all day long to fight the flu, to fight COVID, to fight anything. But we know that all the cells in the body have different markers that stick up on them, and we call them all CDs. CD1, CD2, CD3, and CD stands for cluster of differentiation. How do you tell one cell apart from another? So all B lymphocytes have CD20 and all myeloma cells have CD38. So rituxan is an anti-CD20 antibody. It finds any cell that has CD20 sticking up 
latches onto it and attacks it and tries to kill. So they're basically as if our immune system got really, really smart in a lab and instead of just attacking the flu, uh, we get it to attack a marker that's specifically on cancer. Why do people relapse on CD38 monoclonal antibodies? This uh, membrane protein gets sheds from the, you lose your, the expression. Then you don't have anything to respond to. If you don't have the target that you are giving treatment against, then, then you will lose the effect. And that's one explanation. The, the most reasonable explanation is the cytogenetic. The more aggressive disease, the more ways that the cancer cells will find to, to resist the treatment. But one of the mechanical explanation that the, the cells lose the expression, and we can see that. And you can treat with the daratumumab if you have a patient on very nice response several months, several years, and they get progress, you can treat them with something else. And in need, you can retry the daratumumab, you have done that, and you will go, get response again because the cells will, will increase their expression of the CD38 after a while from, from stopping it.